Hey guys, today we are going to learn how to multiply binomials by using the uh, area model. And the area model is a very powerful method um, that we will use um, uh, in several topics that we're going to learn this year, not just in binomial multiplication. So we talked about binomial multiplication. We're talking about a binomial times a binomial, or in other words, something like this, x plus 1 times the quantity x plus 2. Now, again, we're going to use the area model, and like I said, it's a very powerful model. A lot of people, though, when they think of binomial multiplication, they think of the acronym FOIL, which um, means first, outside, inside, last. And that's commonly taught and commonly learned, and heck, I use it a lot, but we want to learn something way more powerful. And the area uh, model is going to extend past just binomial multiplication. And for that reason, we're not really going to um, explain this in a strictly a FOIL method. So bye-bye FOIL. We're going to use an area model. And this is what's considered an area model. Basically, it's just a rectangle that we're going to represent the area of this rectangle by these two uh, binomials. So um, before we learn exactly how to do it, let's learn um, what it is and why it works. Uh, to do that, we're going to um, uh, take a look at monomial time binomial multiplication, something you already understand, and compare it to the binomial binomial algorithm. So, um, first understand that this is in a factored form. Basically, we're saying this is a multiplication problem. I have 8x or 8 times x times this binomial. And so, if um, I were to ask you to multiply this, um, what you would do is you would distribute. So, um, what would you distribute? This um, monomial that's outside. Uh, the parentheses. So we would go ahead and take this and just distribute. So 8x times x, of course, 8x squared, 8x uh, times 2, which would give us 16x. So once we've distributed the 8x to both terms in the binomial, we have ourselves a nice little polynomial, and we consider this in polynomial form. These two um, expressions are equivalent. Just sometimes we want it in a polynomial form, sometimes we want it in a uh, factored form. Um, so take a look at a binomial times a binomial, and let's just compare. Like we did here, we needed to distribute when we multiply. Well, here we're multiplying, and this is a factored form. We're going to turn this into a polynomial form. So we're going to multiply, and again, we're going to distribute. This time, instead of a monomial that we're distributing, we're distributing a binomial. And we're going to do it just like we did here. We're multiplying it to the first term in this binomial. So it's x plus 3 times x plus, and we're multiplying it to this term, and we have x plus 3 times 2. But now we still have something that's multiplying a binomial, and what we're going to do again is multiply again, and what that means is distribute again. So we need to take this factor and distribute it into both of these terms, x times 3, 3x, and x times x, which is an x squared. We also have to do it here. 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times x is 2x. So once we've got our nice um, four-term polynomial, we want to clean it up. We want to simplify. In other words, we just want to add all this stuff up where we can. So we're going to add this up, simplify, which means combining like terms, which I'll abbreviate CLT. And we have to see what things are uh, like terms. So this is a first degree second degree x squared. Um, this is a zeroth degree or just a constant and this is a first degree. So we can combine the first degrees and we uh, there's nothing really to combine our x squared and our six. So, so what we want to do is write it in a standard form which means a descending order. We want to take the second degree term and list it first. We want to take our linear terms or our first degree terms because of the exponent one. We want to list that next and we want to add those two. And then our constant, um, we always want to list that at the end. So we'll have something like this. And this would be a, a quadratic trinomial in a standard form. Okay? All right. So now let's learn how to do this with the area model. Again, we're going from uh, two binomials in a factored form into a polynomial form. And we're going to use the area model. Like I said, this is a rectangle that we're going to represent the sides by using each one of these binomials. This is what I mean. 
Okay, we're going to take one of these binomials here. I'll use uh, x plus 3. And it doesn't matter which one you would take for the top here. And I'm going to go ahead and put this up here. Representing x represents the length of this side. 3 is going to be the length of this side. x plus 2. I'm going to put down here x is going to represent the length of this side. And 2 is going to represent the length of this side. Notice this, isn't, um, uh, this is not to scale. This is just going to represent areas. Okay. So when we uh, calculate areas, we multiply, and basically the, the area of any rectangle can be found by side times side, which in this case I have x times x, so that's going to give us x squared. Well, think of this, I have 3 times what's this side? Well, same as this, so it's 3 times x is 3x. Obviously here I have x times 2, the area of this little rectangle is 2x. And finally here, I have 3 times 2, the area is 6. So now that I've found all these little sub-areas, for me to find out the total area, I need to add. So I just need to add up all these little sub-areas. But instead of just numbers, these are, of course, variable terms. And we can't just add them all up um, without uh, keeping in mind that we have to combine like terms. But well, before we start adding them up, we also want to put this polynomial form in a uh, polynomial rather in a standard form. So we want a descending order. Well, this is going to be our leading term. In other words, our first term because this is the highest order, x to the uh, x to the second. So that'll um, we'll list that first. Also notice that the way this uh, falls out, that this is going to be our trailing term. And by the way. This will always be our trailing term in this little cell here, or this little area. This will always be our leading term in this little area here. So our trailing term will go up here. Basically, we just have a linear term left here. And linear term means these two. They're both to the power of 1, x to the first. They are like terms, so I can go ahead and add them. 2x plus 3x is 5x. And this is our polynomial form of this factored uh, form of x plus 3 times x plus 2. Okay. So why don't you guys try this. Um, please multiply the two binomials, x plus 1 times x plus 2, and use the area model. Give that a shot. Okay. Um, again, going from a factor form to a polynomial form and using our area model. Again, I can list this either way. I'm going to go ahead and take x plus 1, put it on top x plus 2 along the side here. And the first thing we're going to do to find our areas are multiply. So each of these sub areas, well this is easy, x plus x, x squared, 1 times x, x, 2 times x, 2x, and 1 times 2 is 2. Now we're going to combine like terms. Well first off, let's notice again, as before, this is our leading term, this is our trailing term. These guys have nothing to add to because basically um, there are no, no other like terms that these can add to. The two like terms are our two linear terms, and those are through the x's to the power of 1 first degree terms. We add those 2x plus 1x is 3x, and we have now multiplied our two binomials into their uh, equivalent polynomial form. Okay, let's try another one. Please take a, take a moment and try this one on your own. Go. Okay, um, again, we're going from a factored form to a polynomial form using our area model. Uh, again, and it doesn't matter. I could use 2x plus 3 up here, but I've already set up this animation as x plus 2 and 2x plus 3. Now multiplying each one of these, x times 2x is now 2x squared. 2 times 2x, x times 3, 2 times 3, very basic stuff. Now we're going to add, which we're going to collect up. Uh, uh, combine rather like terms and we only have these two as like terms so let's just go ahead and put them in order we have a leading term 2x squared 6 is our trailing term we add the two linear terms to get 7x and we have an equivalent expression in its polynomial form of 2x squared plus 7x plus 6 okay let's try another one go ahead go All right let's see how you did Okay, x minus 5 along the top, 3x plus 2 along the, uh, the side. Multiplying, we get all the little sub areas. Now we add them up. Leading term, 3x squared. Trailing term, negative 10. Our linear terms, they add up to a negative 13x, and we have our uh, polynomial in a standard form. 
Okay. Now, um, everything else we've had before, we've always multiplied and got a quadratic trinomial. But now, well, give this one a shot and see what happens. Okay, here, this is kind of a special case, and we'll, um, uh, we'll really focus in on this uh, later on when we talk about factoring. But, um, again, if we do this correctly, and we multiply through and get all our little sub areas, and we go to combine like terms, um, we see something that happens. We still have a leading term, x squared. We still have a trailing term of negative 49, but look what happens here. These are going to cancel out. They're basically going to zero out because they will, um, these are opposites, negative uh, 7x and a positive 7x. So you should get the quadratic binomial x squared minus 49. Okay, and just um, we'll be seeing this again later on when we start to factor, but we'll be able to go this way. Um, if you see the pattern, and um, I don't want to really talk about right now. Okay, okay? Um, see if you can figure this one out. Go ahead and try it. Ah, the dreaded binomial square. Actually, um, the first instinct a lot of students have is to do something like this. And I just like, no, please don't do that. Remember, um, when we were learning about exponents, we would think of that as distributing that exponent to all the factors. But these are not factors. These are terms. And we have to think of what we're doing. We are squaring a binomial. This is my base. And squaring it means multiply it by itself. In other words, it's 2x plus 6 times 2x plus 6, which in this case, it's two binomials. Go ahead and use the, um, or using the area model, very simply as we multiply through 4x squared, 12x, 12x, and 36. We combine like terms, we get something like this. This is considered a perfect square trinomial. Perfect square trinomial. The reason is it came from a binomial that was squared. In other words, it came from any time you take a binomial and you square. This is called a perfect square trinomial. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and um, we'll see you in class.